And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, historically even with those of Israel according to the flesh, taken into captivity by first the Assyrian and then the king of Babylon of old. And after Christ's death on the cross, they then could be grafted back into God's family tree by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the centuries. And that's what Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 has as reference to the woman in Revelation chapter 12 originally symbolized all God's children in the first world age, as you can see in verses 1 and 2, but then Satan rebelled, as you can see in verses 3 and 4, and then the chapter fast forwards to Christ's first advent when he was born of the 12 tribes according to the flesh. Salvation, which is the subject of Revelation chapter 12, was then open to all because of Christ's bloodshed on the cross, meaning from that point forward, all had the opportunity to become part of the woman of Revelation chapter 12, which is the many-membered body of the true Christ, God's family tree. So then the 1,260 days in verse 6 are really years, and they occurred during the time of the gap between the 69th week and the 70th week of Daniel chapter 9. The 70th week being the five-month-long hour of temptation that begins with Satan and his angels are cast to earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet, which you can read of in Revelation chapter 12 also, beginning with verse 7. So again, it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns he'll send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds, which always means the five-month-long hour of temptation. In this case, at the end of it, and not only will the elect be gathered to Jerusalem at that time, but also those who of their own free will repented before the seventh trumpet sounded, becoming grafted back into God's family tree as all were a part of in the first world age. The good figs written of in Jeremiah 24 being all who take part in the first resurrection at the seventh trumpet, and the rest of the seventh and thousands of dot Christ will bring with them upon his return because they're the armies which were in heaven you can read of in Revelation chapter 19 the positive to the negative that are the 7,000 fallen angels who are the locust army written of in the book of Joel notice in the fourth seal we see their death which is one of Satan's names and hell followed with them Hades in the Greek but when you look up the word translated hell in 2nd Peter chapter 2 verse 4 which is where the fallen angels were cast down to it's Tartarus in the Greek which as you can see in the Strong's Concordance is part of Hades. So then hell followed with death, ultimately at 666, because that's when that third dies spiritually, when they worship Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, when his image is transmitted throughout the world, along with the images of his fallen angel locust army in the fourth and final stage, the consumer stage. And notice the woman in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, is protected from the spiritual death for the first two and a half months. And then in verse 15, we see what happens at 6. That's when most Christians die spiritually because of Satan's deception, but then those of Philadelphia, 232 of the 7,000 possibly, are what the earth symbolizes in verse 16, when the Holy Spirit speaks through them at that time. Earth being the same word in the Greek as ground in the parable of the sower. Those that receive seed into the good ground being those that heareth the word and understandeth it. The Zadok, that is to say initially, but then the 144,000 as well as whosoever will are added into that group also when the seed of the seal of God comes to fruition in their forehead. That truth swallows up the deception if they hearken to God's voice at that time, which you also see in the book of Joel in chapter 2, verse 32. Smyrna, who are the 144,000 as well as whosoever will, will repent and be grafted back into God's family tree, then being able to take part in the first resurrection when the true Christ returns with the rest of the 7,000 Zadok. So in the fifth seal, we see the positive 7,000, for the most part, the armies which were in heaven that returned with the true Christ, and in the fourth seal, the negative 7,000, Satan's fallen angel locust army, who are killed three and a half days after the two witnesses are killed, who are Moses and Elijah, most likely. That's what Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 looks forward to, is when Satan makes war with the two witnesses and kills them, as you can see in Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. That's also when he sends the Ezekiel 38 confederacy against the mountains of Israel 
Israel, presumably to kill all those standing against him also. But as we know from Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, that invasion gets cut short when the true Christ returns with the armies which were in heaven and those hailstones fall upon not only Gog and his multitude in the battle of the valley of Haman Gog, but also at the battle of Armageddon, which you can read of in Revelation chapter 16, as all are changed into spiritual bodies at that time. And then, and only then, those who are still part of God's family tree, meaning their Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, are gathered to Jerusalem to become part of the millennial priesthood, along with those of the 7,000 who return with Christ at the seventh trumpet. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Which is why Christ says in Mark 13, his elect will be gathered from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven, because it includes those of the Zadok who have lived and died throughout the centuries, in my opinion. They're the candlestick in heaven you can read of in Revelation chapter 4, and when added to the seven churches, that's eight candlesticks, and eight plus the two candlesticks, which are the two witnesses who are most likely Moses and Elijah, that's ten candlesticks, as it was in Solomon's temple, as you can see in 1 Kings chapter 7. But remember, they're only split up into ten candlesticks during the sixth trumpet, going back to one candlestick when the true Christ returns, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. The multiplication having to do with all the others who will be grafted back into God's family tree also in the second resurrection, if they hearken to Christ's teachings throughout the thousand years via the millennial priesthood. That's also when all who remain in heaven until the thousand years are finished return to earth as well with God the Father when the third world age begins after the great white throne judgment. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live eternally through believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee, ending with their being blotted out of existence in the lake of fire as we saw in chapter 28, unless they choose to repent, stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished, which means choosing to absorb Christ's teachings of discipline beforehand whereby they can obtain the backbone it takes to stand against the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Again, fruit means adding on to God's family tree as a branch of the true vine, which is the true Christ, you're expected to bear fruit, as you can see in John chapter 15. All we can do is plant seeds, though, because we're only branches of the true vine, and God the Father is the husbandman, the only one who can cause those seeds of truth to grow in their forehead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, keeping in mind what Christ fulfilled through his bloodshed on the cross, doing away with blood sacrifices for one and all times, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. And not too long ago there was no mass-produced Bible in every language like we have now. Going back to that time period covered in Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 with the woman being the many-membered body of Christ during those 1,260 days which are really years. We now have all 66 books which as we know from the candelabra are all that's necessary to obtain all the need-to-know information about God's plan of salvation whereby whosoever will can hearken to the voice of the Lord our God and be blessed as opposed to cursed knowing what tomorrow brings whereby we're not deceived having that peace of mind that can only be obtained by understanding God's word. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear but shall 
shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Even those baptized into Christ who was baptized in the Jordan will for the most part be deceived by Satan when he appears as Antichrist at 666, becoming the whore of Babylon instead of the virgin bride of Christ, receiving the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 up to the point of being blotted out of existence in the lake of fire unless they choose to repent either before the seventh angel sounds or during the thousand years whereby they can stand against Satan when he's released from the bottomless pit and go into the eternity which is the third world age. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, the tree of life or the tree of death. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Speaking to the natural branches from who Christ would be born, Abraham's seed, singular not plural, who is also the woman's seed written of in Genesis 3.15. And once he paid the price on the cross for one and all times, whosoever will can be grafted into the tree of life, who is Christ, becoming Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of eternal life, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them the promised land, being symbolic of the new heaven and the new earth, which is the third world age, the eternity, when all will be Israel once again, as it was in the first world age, when all were one, as the woman of Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, with a crown of twelve stars, the Lamb's wife being the new Jerusalem, the holy city, and that word new in the Greek means eternal, and as you can see in the last verse of Revelation chapter 21, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life.